to your evening news bulletin with Television Thai News. In the headlines, His Serene Highness Prince Dongyi officially opens the newly constructed Moa Community Police Center. Young Prince Daufa Ahau Man Mataungo supports Child Cancer Awareness Month despite the heavy rain. Deputy Prime Minister warns the public several environmental concerns affecting the region are caused from human activities. And Minister for Justice calls for positive contribution to identify a way forward on human rights issue in the kingdom. These are more stories together with news from around the region, sports and the latest weather bulletin later on in this news package. Now for the news in details, I'm Kalolaine Tonglava Paletua. The current services provided by the police officers dispatch to the Mu'a Community Police Station should be improved to suit the newly upgraded station. This was highlighted by the guest of honor at the opening program or the commissioning of the Mu'a Police Station this morning, His Serene Highness Prince Tungi. Also attending this morning's official opening ceremony were Honorable Salote Mawa Daimi and Lady Alailio Latuk Aho. Linda Filiai with the details. The guest of honor, His Serene Highness Prince Tungi, getting the ribbon to officially open the newly constructed building, Mu'a Community Police Station. His Serene Highness also led the invited guest to inspect the new building. In his remarks to mark the official opening of the police station, he highlighted the importance for everyone to work together for a better and safe community. Today we are marking the completion of the construction work for the Mu'a police station. The station will provide services to people in the eastern district. This project was under a generous assistance from Australia and New Zealand governments. I believe services provided by police officer at Moa Police Station should be improved to treat the newly upgraded police station. District officer, town officer and church minister should work together to reduce criminal activities in the Eastern District. Meanwhile, the New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Mark Talbot, praised the partnership between the three police forces. New Zealand is extremely proud to be associated with the, with the Tonga Police. My government has uh, very recently decided and uh, I was proud to sign up to a further five years of support for the Tonga Police and the Tonga Police Development Programme. It's a multi-million dollar programme. We're putting years into it and we're putting dollars into it because we have a great deal of faith and a great deal of confidence, Honourable Minister, in what your department is delivering for the people of Tonga. During official opening program, the Australian High Commissioner, His Excellency Brett Elton, says he's pleased to join the program. What we're also looking at is the strength of a relationship between three good friends who are absolutely committed to, to promoting policing and recognise the important role of policing in any society, let alone here in Tonga. Also in the remarks from the Police Commissioner, Grant Ophi, they continue its strive to regain the public trust and despite making mistakes, they strive to provide better services. The contribution to the reform of the Tongan police by the government and the people of Australia and New Zealand cannot possibly be overstated. We have the station that we're about to open here, plus at Vainee, Awa, Pangai, and shortly to open the new police station at Nuku Nuku in the Western District. But that is only a small part of what we are receiving from New Zealand and Australia. We have cars, we have uniforms, we have computers, telephones, firearms, handcuffs, closed circuit television, our dog section, but as important, if probably not um, as important, even more important than all of these things is the training, the ongoing training that is supplied and funded by Australia and New Zealand. The estimated amount for the construction of the Mu'a Community Police Station is estimated at more than 976,000 per anga, which was funded through assistance between Tonga Police Australia and New Zealand Police Force. Also attending the program was the Honourable Minister of Police, Josefa Tutafaiva, People's Representatives for Tongatapu Constituency 3, Stephen Halapua, People's Representatives for Tongatapu Constituency 10, Semisita Polwelu, Police Advisors from New Zealand and Australian Governments, Police Officers and others. His Royal Highness, the Young Prince, Taufa Ahau Man Mataungo, has showed his support for the Child Cancer Awareness Month. The Young Prince was the guest of honour 
at a special health program in Golovai on Saturday, which was first organized as a work for health program and later changed due to bad weather. Gali Sidiwanuku was at the event and filed this report. Despite a heavy rain, the young prince of Ahauman Matango was present at the program. In a speech from Dr. Los Manitao Fashi explained about the symptom of child cancer. It includes a headache, fever and others. Dr. Taufa says for a cancer patient, the symptoms will also show constantly. Four young cancer victim children were present at the program on Saturday, including Galistia Nifinao, Amanaki Mafleo and Mwana Kupu. Mwana Kupu performed a solo entertainment. Meanwhile, Akesa Mafleo, a mother for a cancer victim patient, Amanaki Mafleo, told Radio and Television Tonga News that her son was not accessible to any medicine for two years. However, he can still lead a normal life. Celia Klu from the Child Cancer Foundation Tonga, or CCFT, says they're providing assistance for families who need transportation assistance for the cancer victims. Mrs. Kupu also highlighted the importance for making the victims happy at all times. The CCFT have established a special playground at their Betani office for cancer victims to use. The latest death recorded for any child cancer patient was a 14-year-old boy from Maufanga who passed away two weeks ago. Reporting for Television Tonga News, I'm Akali Situyonoko. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Infrastructure, Sami Vaipolo, has warned the public that all the environmental problems in the Pacific region are caused from human activities. The Deputy Prime Minister made this statement while opening a regional environmental workshop for Pacific Islands Network of National Ozone Offices on the implementation of the Montreal Protocol. Also, the Capacity Building Workshop for Customs Offices on controlling trade of on environmentally sensitive commodities. Anasil Falikano was there and filed this report. In the keynote address, the Deputy Prime Minister Honorable Samuel Vaipulu says there are some basic wants required by human which causes destruction to the environment. Now there is very much concern all over the globe on the environmental issues. However, it's your needs and my needs that has created what we are now trying to stop. It was us. We needed the air conditions that Milika said. We needed refrigeration for our food. We needed to eat from what we have in our reefs. We are to use it sustainably. We are to be, we are here to be combined, to work together, coordinate between our island nations. During his speech, Mr. Waibulu urged the customs offices from Tonga and the region to maintain the safety of the environment because of the vulnerability of the Pacific Islands and its location. And I hope that this workshop would enhance the capabilities of each and every country's uh, able to control the border control on these chemicals that we use. I remember uh, when Miriko was talking about the chemicals, I remember when I was a kid, we exported a lot of bananas to New Zealand and they were spraying it with this powder, TDD or something called like that. And these poor Thomas were spraying not knowing, even everyone not knowing that it was not good for health. Today they say it's not good. No wonder why we lost a lot of our people on cancer and all sorts of things. Meanwhile, the United Nations Development Program local manager Milika Tuita told Radio and Television Tonga News 
hosting such workshop will help tackle the environmental challenges facing Pacific Islands. It's to do with, uh, with the understanding of uh, the substance content of these uh, shipments and I think this workshop is trying to uh, emphasize the enforcement and also the importance of uh, uh, integrating this um, uh, knowledge and understanding into the border control system. Taking part in this week-long regional workshop are participants from 22 Pacific Island countries. The workshop is funded by the UN Nations Environmental Programme, or UNEP. For Television Tonga News, I'm Anasiu Falegaono. The Honourable Minister of Justice, Clive Edwards, has called on the participants attending the first human rights workshop in the Kingdom to provide a positive contribution in order to identify a way forward on human rights issue. The aim is to enable the country and its people to continue the protection of fundamental human rights. The first Tonga National Human Rights Consultation Workshop to be held in Tonga commenced this morning at the Fauna Lua Convention Centre in Nukalofa. Sinla do with the details. The Minister for Justice, Clive Edwards, made the call while opening the week-long Tonga National Human Rights Consultation Workshop. The Justice Minister told the participants to develop and promote an equitable and progressive society where everyone enjoys good health, peace, harmony and prosperity in meeting their aspirations in life. Human rights protection is a fundamental building block for the development of every free and democratic society, of which Tonga is no doubt such a society. Since the edict of emancipation in 1862, Tongans have enjoyed the blessings of liberty. Since the granting of the Constitution of Tonga in 1875, Tongans have further enjoyed fundamental rights bestowed on them. These include freedom from slavery, equality under the law, freedom of worship, freedom of expression, freedom to petition, the protection from unlawful detention, and the right to protection of one's life and property, to name just a few. During his opening remarks, he warned the participants to be cautious with what they absorb from international forums. We should be vigilant that we may commit to do or stop from doing because others do the same, may not be the sensible way in hindsight. We should be as attentive that what we may assume is safe and good for us may turn out to be, over time, the erosion of our values as a society. Tongans are not oppressed, but their freedoms can always be expanded. Tongans are not denied access to opportunity, but they could always be equipped with skills and expertise to maximize benefits. Tongans are not deprived from destitution, but their lives can always be improved in the quality and quantity of services provided for them. Meanwhile, a human rights advisor from the Forum Secretariat, who is facilitating consultation, Filippo Mazarua voiced two objectives needed to be achieved after the workshop. And that really is the completion of Tongan's common core document, which we will go in a little bit more detail towards the week, and basically the establishment, if it has not been already, the um, uh, establishment of a human rights uh, coordinating committee to support your government in its human rights endeavours. Participants are expected to take part in the discussions and debates on several issues relating to human rights. Attending the program of the workshop was the New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Mark Talbot, Solicitor General Aminia Sikefu, Chief Executive Officers of some government ministries, civil society organisations and others. The main challenge facing women with leadership roles in Tonga is dividing their time fairly as leaders of workplaces and their responsibilities at home. This was witnessed during the marking of the International Women's Day in Nukalofa on Saturday, March 8th. Let's take a look. The national theme for the day, Women in Decision-Making Level. 
In a panel discussion to mark the International Day for Women, broadcast on radio and television Tonga, local women who are heads of government ministries revealed how they daily face the challenge of dividing their time at home and in their office. The director of the Ministry of Education, Emily Bovalu, told the panelist that the role she holds as the leader of the Ministry of Education requires a lot of work and attention. The director of education believes this is because she has to balance her time in the office with her other duties at home, being a mother, wife and grandmother. Also during the panel discussion, the chief clerk of the house, Gloria Boleo, says not only they are required to divide their time, but they are also required to make sacrifices. Mrs. Boleo says the sacrifices must be made in order to succeed with her role in parliament. Meanwhile, the CEO of the Ministry of Commerce, Tourism and Labour, Vaimwana Daukolo, supported the issue. The CEO of the Ministry of Tourism says some people may think that holding a post in the ministry is a privilege. However, it comes with certain and very demanding responsibility. Also in the panelists was the CEO of the Ministry of Justice, Susana Faletau, who spoke more of her childhood and hoped to return and serve the government and people of Tonga. I think what was really important about my childhood overseas was that my parents both uh, strongly believed in educating all the children. Uh, I had two older sisters and three younger brothers and our education was a huge priority for all of us and mm. they made sure that that was one of the life tools we had. Mm. It was always instilled in me that uh, we would return to Tonga and that any education we got overseas, it was to come back and hopefully benefit, you know, the Tongan society. So I never looked at, um, as Br at Britain as my home. And I always knew that there would come a time when I would return to Tonga and, um, you know, to to my own nationals mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully get a job. Meanwhile, according to information from the National Committee organizing the International Women's Day, this year's National Women's Day coincides with Tonga Parliaments in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program Good Governance Project. The aim of the project is to strengthen women at decision-making level where the activity for a practice parliament for women is currently underway. At present, the numbers of women CEOs in Tonga is increasing. A Tongan fisherman has died while he was rushed to the hospital on Friday afternoon. His death is a lurch for using the cylinder gas for harvesting of sea cucumbers. This is according to the Nukalofa Police Station's acting superintendent, Inspector Devita Fifita, during an exclusive interview on Radio Tonga's weekly news magazine on Saturday. Inspector Fifita reported that the police station received reports around 3 p.m. Friday afternoon a man needed an emergency transportation to the hospital. Police officers went to the wharf and rushed the man to the hospital. Inspector Fifita says it is alleged that the deceased, together with other fishermen, went fishing at Galefesia Reef when the incident occurred. Meanwhile, police are continuing the investigation into the matter and have remained in custody of different men in regards to the case. Television Tongans contacted Avala Hospital, but no one was available to comment on this case. The New Zealand government continues to provide assistance to the Tonga Power Limited. This morning, the New Zealand High Commissioner Mark Talbot presented a donation of five new drugs to the Minister of Public Enterprises, Fealvata, to help with the project to renew the power lines and power poles in the rural area. Salama fully vie with the details. The assistance includes five big trucks, which are two bucket trucks, two grain borer and one tipper truck, which aims at helping out the Village Network project. The Village Network project consists of operations to renew the power lines, power poles in the rural area. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, Mr. Talbot, the New Zealand High Commissioner, says they are happy to provide this assistance and also thanking the workers for all their hard work. I just really want to say, first of all, that uh, the Village Network Upgrade project that uh, Tonga Power Limited is running is a really fantastic project for improving the uh, efficiency of electricity here in Tonga, making sure that more people are getting safer electricity using less diesel in order to, to produce it. So uh, that's a wonderful outcome. But really, I want to take my hat, hat off to uh, these guys over here 
because uh, they're the ones who are doing the hard work. Meanwhile, the Minister for Public Enterprises, Honourable Fe'al Vrata, on behalf of the government and Tonga Power Limited, thanked the New Zealand High Commissioner and his office for the funds. We are, from we are happy for this donation and we are also grateful. I'd like to thank the New Zealand Aid on behalf of the government of Tonga and Tonga Power Limited for this assistance. These drugs are important to get this project going. Meanwhile, the project manager, Neil Jones, says this project began in May 11th in 2011. They have finished with stage one of the project and are now working on the second and third phase in the Western District. He says they are grateful for this fund and it may take time for the boys to get to know how to use it, but he's sure it will be perfect and will help them a lot with this project. They started using these trucks today. One crewman from the Pacific Princess cruise ship is still recovering at Vala Hospital after his cruise ship had an emergency stopover at Vuna Wolf last Thursday. According to information from Vala Hospital, the crewman had a surgery operation last week and is expected to be discharged from hospital later this week. Lord Dang of Vanukanuka from Vala Hospital was able to provide information on this case after radio and television Tongan News tried to contact the superintendent of Vala Hospital. The Pacific Princess cruise ship anchored for almost two hours in Nukalofa during its emergency stopover from its journey from New Zealand to American Samoa. A passenger on board the ship also needed medical attention and he was able to be transported on an Australian air ambulance on Thursday. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health also confirms the crewman will hopefully return to his country later on this week. That's the local scene for tonight. Pacific is up next after this break.